And I probably should have put then there. <laughs> I have to put that there. Well, I'll, I'll do it later. I don't have my pen. Um, it should say then. I forgot the word then. Then, then, you place. Then, you place added string. Then you place added string on the water table. Right? Then you place added string on the water table, and this is B on consequence. Okay, so we have here, and I'll make sure on my notes, uh, if I have a pen, where's my pen? Uh, to just make sure I put then. So what we have here, just so that you see, right, I have to be very explicit. If is important, then is important. So we see if you have, um, if you water your grass during a drought, then you place added strain on the water table. Okay, so that's number one. Number two then says, so we recognize we satisfied this first line. Right? This, this first premise has been satisfied. If you water your grass during a drought, then you place added strain on a water table. You can imagine that you, you're taking some environmental class or something, and your instructor tells you, hey, write a paper on something having to do with water conservation. And you say, hey, you know, I watched Dr. Campbell's lecture. I can use modus ponens. Let's use modus ponens to talk about this. this that's the idea. So, number two then says, you water your grass during a, down, a drought, right? You actually do do it. This says, if you do it as a conditional, this is what will happen. And this is says, line two of my premise says, you actually did it, right? You did. So, in two it says, you water your grass during a drop. You do do it. Right? So, if A, then B, A, and all we need now is therefore B, and we'll conclude this, this argument, right? 3 is now therefore, therefore, you place added strain on the water table, right? Therefore, you place added strain on the water. So this is me beginning, as, you, as I said, I began with this rule of inference, this first rule of inference, which is modus ponens. I appropriated modus ponens to frame, to structure, to condition my argument, which meant that I be, since I began with this rule of inference modus ponens, I recognized that anything that I wanted to talk about had to conform to the parts of modus ponens. How many parts do we have in modus ponens? We have four parts in modus ponens. We have our antecedent. We have our consequence. We have an affirmation of our antecedents, and we have our conclusion, the affirmation of the consequence. If then antecedent happens, consequence happens. That's the format. If you water your grass during a drought, we satisfy this part. Then you place added strain on the water table, we satisfy this part. You water your grass during a drought, we satisfy this part. Therefore, you place added strain on the water table. You satisfy this part. Once we check and fall the, and we satisfy therefore, once we check and fall the pieces, we now have properly, pro properly appropriated modus ponens to the construction of an argument. So this is not a question of if it works. It absolutely works, right? Again, it's an intuitive approach. This first example is almost exactly like, it, it, it assumes the form of modus ponens necessarily, but as I get 
more complex, you'll see that the form gets a little bit weaker per se, but what ends up happening is I still maintain the form of modus ponens, I just construct a more elaborate argument. My argument, I mean, this takes up a sentence or two, right? Actually, this is this could satisfy as maybe two or three sentences. Next thing you know, I have a paragraph. Next thing you know, uh, please don't call me. Sorry about that. I always unplug my phone. I don't know. Don't call me. So, yeah, you get the idea. All right. So the next thing is uh, rule number two. We're going to our example two. I'm going to return to this example and make it a bit more complicated. Right. Same exact discussion on the water tablet, but we're going to flush it out now. Right. So now we're going to change this to example number two number two, and we're going to erase all of this. Okay, so, example number two. What I've done in this, first I'll read it and then I'll write it on the board. Um, hold on a second. Okay, first I'll read it, then I'll write it on the board. If you water your grass during a drought by using a water hose or water from your faucet, then I added something more, which pulls water from the water tablet, you place added strain on the water table because the water you used to water your grass is derived from the water table. Okay, so it's important to recognize how we appropriate modus ponens to this example. So I'm going to write it down and then we'll look at it in a more complex uh, systematic way. So let's write the whole thing down. So we say if if you water your grass during a drought which is exactly what I had before. Okay, so if you water your grass during a job, what I've added in example two, right, what I've added, I'm gonna change my color, in example two is what's known as a clause, right? I'm, I'm giving you a little bit more information, right? Which pulls water from the water tablet. So I've added, which pulls water from the water tablet or table. I think it's I should probably should be table. I don't know if it's called a water tablet. Water table. So if you water your grass during a drought, and we stopped there before in example number one. In example number two, exactly the same format, I just want to make my argument a little bit bigger. Right? I want to have it so such that my argument's a little thicker that I build on it and the example number three is going to be even bigger so that you guys recognize that you can flesh this out to, you know, a page length, two page lengths. Like this prime, this, this um, antecedent could be a page or two or three or a chapter, right, in a book. This could be another page or two or three or a chapter, right? The more you practice this, the more you recognize that the content information doesn't define anything. What defines the nature of the argument is the appropriation of the rule of inference, right? So I've added this to make it longer just to prove the point, right? So this, this satisfies the condition for my um, antecedent. So this satisfies A. Uh, okay. So if you, if you water your grass during a drought, by using a water hose or water from drought, um, which, sorry, if you water your grass during a drought by using, yeah, I, I put, uh, sorry, I put the wrong thing up here. Oh, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry, I don't want to confuse you. I lost my line. If you water your grass during a drought by using a water hose or water from the faucet, well, I added quite a bit. <laughs> Let me write this down again, I'm sorry.